people. I have a watch I want to share. This is a cool one. I'm all about Omega watches tonight. I, I had my fascinating, introspective, reflective commentary on Omega, my experience with the brand and what they need to supersede Rolex on my last show. But I want to show some of the hardware on this show. This is a watch that literally dropped my jaw when it came out back in 2003. This is the Omega Seamaster Railmaster XXL chronometer. The biggest manual wind movement you'll see in an Omega wristwatch, 49.2 millimeters in white gold. When this watch came out in 2003, I thought that's a watch that Shaq could wear. Shaq, like the watch, was a big deal back in 2003. Fully loomed dial. When you turn it over, that's where the craziness really starts because you have a movement sized for the case. This is probably the best executed Unitas 6498 you'll ever see. It's doing business as Omega Caliber 2201, 17 joules, chronometer certified, adjusted in five positions. It's been upgraded with better finish, a 53-hour power reserve, and a 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate versus the standard 18,000. Now, they also made this watch in steel, but the watch you see here in white gold was a 157-piece limited edition with a glorious, glossy black lacquer dial. Uh, I, I should really polish the crystal. The dial, it, it's almost like a black car. If there's anything on the crystal, it's going to show on the dial. Let's make a second pass at that, Harris, and see what we got here. This is a sensation, and yes, it's fully loomed. This thing has a loom shot, like a 747 landing in pitch black. It's absolutely terrifying and imposing, amazing and ravishing. All of those superlatives apply because this watch 57 millimeters lug to lug and 49 in diameter. Let's get one more case back shot. Absolutely a shocker. A lot of folks can't even imagine Omega made something like this, but not only did it, but it gave it 150 meter water resistance so you can throw it on a NATO and take it swimming. This is an awesome piece right here. I, I think I owe you a wrist shot after that. You gotta see how it wears on a normal wrist. That thing puts the big pilot back in the case. I mean, that is... The answer no one was asking for to the IWC 5002. Let's take a look at that. I love this watch. Is it crazy? Yeah. You could actually wear this watch. You could wear this watch on a small Because it's not wrist. overly thick. No, it's only 12 and a half millimeters. It's about as thick as a Submariner. And it's got a white gold clasp to match. They really didn't cheap out with this one. They could have gone pinbuckle. It's got a full gold clasp. You see, stuff like that, Rolex wouldn't do this. Omega, this is your heart and soul. You're a little bit different. Run with that. And this is one of the favorite, my favorite parts yeah. about the pre-owned watch business is that, you know, watches like this that sort of disappear from a collection, you know, altogether, that were produced in a short run in only 157 pieces, that they come in and you get to really experience it all over again. And I think that that's one of the best parts of pre-owned and that's one of the best parts about just watches in general, is that you can go on the hunt for something that was produced for one year in the 90s or 80s or whenever it was and track it down. And, you know, that's why this watch is just, you know, ultra cool, ultra special. And it was, you know, quirky when it came out and it's even quirkier now. Yeah, and it's quirky enough for me. The thing about being in the pre-owned watch business, especially in a large dealer like us where we're seeing thousands of watches a year, it's... It's like experiencing the watch industry the way Dr. Manhattan experiences time if it were articulated by Virginia Woolf. It's just a stream, it's a continuum, it never ends, and everything that's ever been exists concurrently in one place. That's why I love working here. Uh, what other, so we've got one more here on the table, and guys, if you have any more questions, the show will be ending soon, so please, you know, Keep asking and hopefully we'll keep answering. Yeah. So last watch on the table here is a watch from Gerald Genta. So here we have Gerald Genta when he was together with Daniel Roth. And this particular watch is a bi-retro date. Well, first off, solo bi-retro. You've got a date there that's by re that's sort of uh, that's a retrograde. You've got minutes there that are retrograde. You've got the jump hour and then you also have a sort of there on the back is retrograde minutes and you know to go along with the tick marks that are on the bottom. What's super cool about this watch is that the retrograde minute is actually bi-directional. So you can go both forwards and backwards without damaging the watch. And this particular complication I think became extremely synonymous 
with Gerald Argenta, not Gerald Argenta himself, the watchmaker, but Gerald Argenta, the brand, right before the Bulgari takeover, because Gerald Argenta was long gone from this brand by the time that this watch came out. But this this movement and this styling is really what Genta, you know, the brand became known for right before the Bulgari takeover, and then even during that sort of transition process, you know, you, you saw a, a few last vestiges. I actually happen to love the post Gerald Genta Gentas because from about 1996 when he started to check out in earnest to 2010 when Gerald Genta and Daniel Rolfe in Los Santier were subsumed into Bulgari, the company made some of the quirkiest, craziest, and most memorably cool complications, most of them revolving around jump hours and retrogrades. There are actually two separate patents filed for their modules. One was the system that allowed the bi-directional setting of the retrograde without damage, and the other was a special blocker system that prevented the jump hour from jumping when the watch was shocked or bumped on the wrist. Now, Interestingly, not only can you set the minute bi-directionally and use the minute hand to drive the jump hour, but the watch actually features a pusher adjuster on the flank so you can jump the hour without displacing the minute hand. So if you've got it really zeroed and you don't want to mess up your minute calibration, you can actually jump the hour without disrupting the minutes. Very cool, in this era, Gerald Genta tended to use ETA 2892s for the entry-level watches with their own module, and for the higher-end watches, they used a Gerard Perigo base with their bi-retro jump hour module. These were fantastic watches, and you can see the attention to detail. The handsome lacquer transfer of the dial for the minute track, the combination of two separate planes with a metallic finished minute track, and then a matte black center, and the fact that the case back is entirely cambered to trace the curve of your wrist, it sits really nice with a cushion type profile and lugs that are almost not there. I happen to love the arena by retros of the era with the tantalum bezels and the white gold cases. Those were absolutely stunning. This is a wonderful part of that period. Yeah, the arenas were definitely my favorite watch from that era, and I think that that's actually, you know, when consumers are thinking about Joe Argenta from that era, that's sort of what gravitates, you know, that's what their mind thinks about. But watches like this were also being made at the time and, you know, called smaller, uh, you know, more conservative cases. That right there almost qualifies as their dress watch yeah. because the other stuff was yellow, neon green, orange, blue. It, it was almost Dada for your wrist. It happens wrist. to fit incredibly well though. And, oh, yeah. and here it has almost like a black brown strap. It, you know, definitely can be construed almost as like a fashion watch. I think somebody mentioned that on the chat. But it, you know, it's a fashionable watch. I wouldn't associate the negative connotations of the term. I, I agree. And I think that it's also a watch that you, know, you really can't fully appreciate it until you see it in person.